Hey everyone, welcome and thanks for joining. If you haven't seen our other videos, go check them out. They'll give you a better understanding of how we got to where we are today. But a quick recap, we've been preparing to buy our forever boat for several years now. We converted a school bus into our home to improve our skills and save up a ton of money specifically for this adventure. We bought a super cheap leaky McGregor and fixed her up as we learned to sail. Over the years, we stayed busy sailing, hiking, and freediving. We whittled down a list of about 50 boat models, and one of our top five popped up on an auction website, we jumped on it. We almost lost out, but won with our top dollars. Now we've packed up what little we haven't already sold off, driven across the country, inspected and launched our new home, and motored most of the day to a yard that allows do-it-yourself repairs. Last week we disassembled the interior, and this week we get to cleaning, scraping away years worth of saltwater grime from a boat who, as we'll soon find out, has been in need of serious repair for a long time. We had a pretty slow morning today. We were really cold last night. It was a really cold night. And so we kind of slept in a little bit today till it was a little warmer. But we're up and working today. Today is a big day. We're going to get it all cleared out inside the bilge so that we have complete access to the grid so we can start cleaning it and then start grinding away and cutting out the bad. Before we can get to that though, we need to uninstall some things. So I'm going to work on uninstalling this wiring disconnected from the grid and also these hoses. All the hoses and pumps and everything and the seacocks, are, we're just going to undo them and put them over into this little area right here because there's no damage as far as we can tell over there. So we're just going to kind of stick them all there. And this wiring, after we undo it, there's enough slack right here that I think we're going to try and raise it up and suspend it from the ceiling so that we can access all the grid without anything in the way. We got all the wires and hoses unscrewed. It's all up, it's tethered, and now we can clean. I have never been so excited to clean a bilge before. Do you think that this right here was added later? Because it actually looks like this right here is a separate piece of fiberglass. And then it has a different, a slightly different color than this. So I almost think that this has been like re-fiberglassed. Sure. And like, so there's that there. And then there's even down here, this almost looks like this has had another piece of fiberglass put it on it as well. So I almost wonder if it was like band-aided. In everything I've watched and read about the construction of this boat, I'm going to guess that it wasn't band-aided. So what we're seeing is we've got the grid structure, which was made in a mold. So this is from the female mold, popped out. And then we've got the hole, which is also made in a mold. And then we have this section right here is where the grid meets the hole and it was fiberglass together by hand. So that's why this is so smooth and flawless looking is because it, it was made in a mold. And then over here we have hand laid fiberglass and it especially looks different from everything else because they don't fiberglass down the grid to the hole. They just, they just use a bonder and glue it down. So that's my guess. Uh, but I definitely think that we should take some pictures and send it to Pinato just to be sure. And also it doesn't hurt to sand the gel cut off and have a look at ourselves. This has been 
this is a hand laid fiberglass right here. So this is kind of, it's pretty rough. But then the next little section over under the chart table, this is smooth. This is from the mold. And so I'm thinking, why would, why would that be mold and that be hand laid unless they repaired here? Kind of freaking out a little bit because of all the different layers and maybe patch jobs and slightly different paint, whatever. And upon further investigation, we're realizing that this down here, um, the difference is actually just paint. Uh, maybe a gel coat, maybe a bill train, whatever, but it, it isn't the fiberglass. It hasn't been refiberglassed down. And we remember that on some of the like Benerto forums, that is not uncommon for these Benerto holes and grids to flex a little bit and crack the gel coat. And so people online recommend, oh, you just throw on some new paint or some joko, whatever, and you're good to go. Now, that's not to say that that's the right thing to do or that you shouldn't dive in further and see if there's a problem, whatever. But that is, we have actually read that on a forum, so possibly that's what he read too. Now that we kind of figured that out, we're gonna take this couch apart. Not, not like how we did the other one, but we're just gonna take the cushions off and peek back there. And how similar the two sides are should give us a better idea of what we're dealing with here. But first, more importantly, we found this cool pan! And check it out. Well, for one, wow. we've got a colander built in. How easy is it to drain your noodles if you could just be like, drained noodles. Let's have some pasta. Okay, but check this out too. It tells you for the kind of noodles that you have. found previous owner how many pens have you found thank in your you life thank you so much that's true <laughs> <laughs> this is the coolest thing i've ever found is what i meant to say <laughs> definitely the coolest pan thank you this is like this is christmas made my day i'm gonna cook with this all the time and every time i do i will think of you even though we've never met we got these access hatches open and good news there are these exact same stripes of fiberglass strips of fiberglass as there were on the other side that are a slightly different color. Woohoo! So it means they, this was installed after the grid was attached and everything right, and then they just reinforced it, threw some paint on it to cover up the fiberglass. And even better, down here, you can see that that is also not the same smoothness, right? So that actually has additional fiberglass and paint on it as well, just like the other side, to reinforce it. <laughs> Definitely that is, best ah. scenario. Yeah, absolutely. Oh, that's extremely dirty. <laughs> you didn't even know what it was, did you? Oh, I'm gross. Oh, yeah, I just put that back. No wonder I'm having allergies. Oh. Hey, everybody. I want to interrupt just really quick. We've been getting a lot of messages and comments asking us for more information about what happened to the boat, why did it get damaged, and what needs to be done to fix it. And so I have been making a video answering all of those questions, which will be coming out on Monday. So make sure you subscribe and hit that little bell for the notification so that you can see that video when it comes out. I even learned how to animate and make little illustrations, so hopefully it should answer all of the questions and explain it in great depth, which is what we're going for with the video. Also, I really just want to say thank you. Like, Brett and I are absolutely, absolutely astounded that you guys are here, that you're interested in our project and interested in our videos, and so thanks. Thank you for being here. We were not expecting this to grow so fast for you guys all to be here so soon. We've been like checking it together, be like, oh my gosh, we got 100 new subscribers. Oh my gosh, we got 10,000 new subscribers. We've also been getting a lot of comments and messages asking us where our Patreon page is. And I have a very simple explanation for that. It is that you're early. <laughs> We were not expecting you here at this party so soon and we were not ready for it But Brett and I have been working really hard all week to get all of our ducks in a row And so our patron community page is now live if you guys are somebody who messaged us or if you're interested in that The link is going to be in the description and the about page on the YouTube channel So you guys can go check it out over there I won't spend any more time talking about it during this video But I really hope you guys continue to enjoy the videos and the journey Brett and I we really love projects. It is 
one of our absolute favorite things to do together in our marriage. We like to build things, we like to take things apart, we like to learn new skills, and let this boat project encapsulates all of that. We're already having so much fun, and I know we're gonna continue having fun just because we've done stuff in the past that's proven that. So I hope that you guys can join in on the fun. Heaven knows the world needs a little bit of happy right now. So thanks for being here. Thanks for subscribing. Ah, ah. Okay, I'm gonna stop babbling now and let you guys get back to the regular video, but thanks. Well, with all that figured out and those stresses eliminated, I think we can move on now with continuing moving forward with cleaning and getting things ready to actually deconstruct. Cause I was freaking out hard there for a little while. In the middle of cleaning and decided that it'd probably be best to take this little pump structure out so one we can clean under it but also so we can inspect under it a little bit better too that was not too bad of all the things we've uninstalled that was probably the easiest three screws lifted up moved some hoses around pulled it up now we get pretty much full access underneath and it's dirty but as far as i can tell structurally sound so just clean all this up and we'll probably repaint it looking good All weekend, there's been people around flying their drones over the boatyard in the bay right here. And now that we've got this super pretty sunset, I was like, hey Brett, let's get the drone up and get some really pretty shots. We can use them as like transitions for the videos. It'll be really buttery smooth, people will love it. Uh, so we got it all out and found out that we're actually super close to a regional airport, which means that it's very illegal to be flying your drone right here without any kind of authorization. And Brett's a pilot. And the FAA is the one that says it's illegal to fly your drone over here. The FAA is also uh, who tells Brett that he can keep his pilot's license. And Brett's pilot's license is quite vital to his you know, job and career and future. So we aren't gonna mess with any rules there. Fortunately, he also has a drone pilot's license, so we just submitted a request to get uh, like a waiver authorization so that we can fly over here. So potentially, maybe, no promises, we'll get you some cool drone shots one of these days. Uh, if there's been any in the video to this point, it's because we did get the request and I threw it in. That's possible. But the FAA on their site said it can take up to 90 days to, to give us the request. So there may or may not ever be any drone video, but if there is, you're welcome. We're working our way aft into the forward battery compartment, but before we can access the grid underneath, we need to remove the battery cables and of course the starter battery and generator battery. found some added fiberglass that was definitely added wrong. There's a seam right here. My guess is that he laid probably one big piece here. Maybe not, it might have even been him, may have had it done. A big piece laid here 
and then laid another piece just right here on top because it's thicker here trying to reinforce this keel bolt and who knows i mean maybe it was just done out of precaution maybe there's a little leak whatever but regardless they didn't even stand back the gel coat to make this fiberglass adhere to the underlying fiberglass so of course it, i could probably pull this entire structure up as one piece if i tried hard enough we are done cleaning and now it's time for some dinner making pasta in our one pan our tea kettle can we clean up the counter oh. we have two pans now we're making pasta not even in our pasta pan i know shame and unfortunately it's dirty and we don't have a good way to wash dishes at the moment but we're resourceful i have dinner's on machete yum Thank this you, smells Rick. really good it does smell really good i'm so hungry today was a huge day we got everything all cleared out we got the hoses moved, the wires strung up, and cleaned because it was nasty. All that's left is the one seacock. Tomorrow, we get to start building our plastic shelter in here so we can start grinding. Gotta make a run to the hardware store, buy all that stuff, all the respirators and masks and gloves and all that. But tomorrow starts the huge project. Tomorrow is big. We want to just make sure that we are still on the schedule to get our keel dropped. Next week, we do a bit of back and forth with the yard about getting our keel dropped. So far, it's looking good. And then we get to work on our broken grid. First, we have to protect the rest of the boat from the penetrating fog of gel coat and fiberglass that we're about to create. Then we get to bust out the grinders. By the end of the day, we find out that our super awesome, but ridiculously hard to come by thanks to COVID protective gear isn't nearly as good as we hoped it was. You can go find a place to lay. <laughs>